Love, love that slogan. We are calling this segment all this week called Know Your Dough, courtesy of the Tennessee Valley Federal Credit Union. We've covered lots of things from a spending plan. We'll be talking about ways to protect your um, investments and your accounts from, that, from fraudulent um, corruption as the week goes along. But this morning, we're talking to anybody out there who is looking to buy a house because they have a great mortgage department at the credit union, chaired by Eric Weekly, who is here along with Hannah Bullard, who works for the credit union. But you yourself, Hannah, represent a different part of the housing market because you're a renter. Yes, yes, Good I rent you. here in Chattanooga. And I gotta say, I wasn't sure coming to a new city how long I wanted to stay in Chattanooga. Mm -hmm which is why I went with the renting option. But being here, I really see a future here in Chattanooga. So I'm excited to Good. hear what Eric has to say about owning a home here. That was a perfect way to lead into <laughs> you, right? Um, well, you want everyone at some point to be in the position to buy their own home. That right. just breeds um, financial independence and, and strength. But there are a lot of questions that people have, Eric, when it comes to when is the right time to buy? Am I qualified to buy? and you get all those fielded to you? There, there are a lot of questions between renting and buying. Mm -hmm. Always has been, always will be. Um, the biggest thing is renting, you know, you're paying somebody else. You're not really building equity for yourself. Um, you may not have maintenance. Um, whereas buying a home, you have um, a way to pay yourself. You've got mm -hmm. appreciation in the home's value, plus you're paying down your mortgage balance, building that equity for yourself. But it also comes with, you know, the responsibility of upkeep. Right. Um, things may break, you know, washing machine goes out, refrigerator, pipes break, you know, yard work maintenance, things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, there's definitely pros and cons to both. Let's talk about this a little bit because if you, I talk to a lot of realtors here on the show and they say that the housing market is stabilizing, that mm -hmm. insane uptick we had in housing prices is sort of moderating a little bit. Right. If you are looking down to, to buy, mm -hmm. if you were Hannah and she said, okay, I'm ready. What, what are you looking at from a lending perspective when it comes to credit scores? What do you need? So the first thing is, you know, there are a lot of apps out there in today's world, Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, things like that, that will give you a snapshot of what your credit looks like. From a lending perspective, we look at all credit scores. We look at each scenario a little bit differently. Uh, you know, a 720 credit score might get you one of our 100% financing option loans. Um, let's say a 620 credit score, you might have to have a little bit of a down payment. Or we might have other options to look at, um, but it doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean that you're completely out of the market for getting a home. Uh, we tend to take a big picture look at the whole entire situation and what's going on in the credit, what's going on in the uh, employment world, and what's going on with um, just down payment finances in general. And, you know, in comparing that to mortgage payment versus a rent payment and so trying to help members. If somebody with the new year, if someone said, okay, I want to make this the year I buy a house. Mm -hmm. So in January, let me plan so that maybe by September, I'm in a position. Can they work on a plan like that with you? Absolutely, yes. We can start by checking credit first um, and kind of giving a plan for several months down the road, including budgeting, uh, what to do with your credit and how to get that to a point where it may be a more favorable, favorable rate or a better product um, or just buying in general. Maybe somebody is at a point where they just cannot buy at this point in time. Right. Um, but we could lay out a path for them um, over X number of months uh, to help them become a homeowner. Okay, so you said, Hannah, that now that you're here, you're liking it, so perhaps this will be where you choose to stay. But I'm guessing that you also like the house you rent right now, too. Oh, I do. Yeah, it feels, like, it feels just like home already. I've been there for about a year and a half. And it's a great location, which is something I took a lot of time looking into while choosing to rent. Where am I going to live? What's the convenience? What am I close to? How are the neighbors? And I was blessed enough to find the perfect option for me, but I know a lot of people aren't in that same predicament. So I'm not quite sure what I would have done mm -hmm. not finding the perfect house to rent. I might have looked into buying. I, I don't know. Well, yeah, because it's a hot market out there. So you're in direct competition with a lot of people who are also looking at that same house. So I'm sure that yes. the landlord in your case kind of wanted to vet you because he or she probably had some choices of who he rented it to. There was still quite an extensive vetting process. So were you surprised? It's been a long time since I've gone through a rental situation. 
um, with how much money, not to pry, but it's not inexpensive to rent either because you've got to put some money down up front. Yes, it, it came out to be more than I was expecting. This was the first time I was going in by myself and renting a home. I usually had a roommate um, or it was through a college service. So going into it, I was surprised mm -hmm. at the down payment, the security p deposit for a pet, mm -hmm. the cost of utilities. Right, and you have to pay to get all those set up too. There are a lot of expenses. When it comes to purchasing, mm -hmm. um, people tend, uh, we've had this conversation this week too, tend to look at what their monthly payment is, not what their overall expense is going to be. So people can really focus on the interest rates right now, mm -hmm. which is smart. Right. But at the end of the day, if you're paying more for a house than you might have to say four months from now, monthly payment aside, you're going right. to be spending a lot more money. Yeah, it, budget is probably the, the most important thing when uh, looking at buying a home. You know, it, it's looking at all of those additional expenses, your utilities, your groceries, your gas, um, unexpected things that, again, go back to that may happen at the house, uh, replacing a refrigerator or an HVAC unit or a roof. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if the property's in a flood zone, well, what happens if the home does flood? What, so, what, is, what is the percentage you, your, your mortgage should not be? Is it 30%? Of your income? It, it varies, yes. You know, 30 to 32 percent, you know, overall mortgage payment would be about the, the top end of where somebody would uh, want to be and where we as lender kind of feel comfortable. Um, there's give and take with that, um, obviously, but. Do you look when you're lending and, and making an approval, do your underwriters look at job stability or the length of employment or anything like that? Yes, you know some of the regulations and the guidelines that we have to follow do go back to length of employment and kind of what that looks like going forward. Is there the probability of continued employment going forward? And if we have a history of it, somebody's worked somewhere for 15 or 20 years, there's probably a good chance that they're going to be able to make that payment and they're going to be gainfully employed. Somebody that may have jumped from job to job to job to job, you know, in the prior six months, um, maybe a little bit more risky for mm -hmm. us to take a look at. But if you're jumping, because that's kind of the name of the game now mm -hmm. for a lot of people too, that's right. how they increase their income is by jumping right. where the opportunities go. So as long as you're jumping from job to job and the income is stable, stable or increases, mm -hmm. is that the same as job to no job to job again? It's definitely been that way the last year or two um, with the way that the uh, market has been with, you know, raises with, you know, entry level positions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily exclude anybody from getting a mortgage, just, you know, jumping multiple jobs in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. But it, we're going to take a, a deeper dive into that and see, okay, why? And then again, go back to what is that probability that that's going to continue or is somebody going to continue to keep job hopping? I hear you loud and clear on the looking at each person as his or her own individual case. Mm -hmm. And I think that's great. I like though a goal. Mm -hmm. So if you were somebody looking to buy a house this year and maybe your credit score, let's just pretend it's bad. Let's say it's, okay. I'll just say it's bad, whatever that looks like. <laughs> I won't throw out a number. Um, what would be some steps that they should take and what should be kind of a magic number to try to get to to even be considered? So we would love to be able to talk and coach those borrowers and potential borrowers on what to do and what not to do. There's a lot of things out there in the marketplace that you can go and do and the classes that you can take. Uh, as well as credit uh, repair type companies. And it's just a big picture look at, okay, what is driving the score to where it is and where can we drive it up to a point that's um, gonna get somebody into a home? Uh, you know, there, there's so many different factors that play into it. Mm -hmm. uh, we could do a whole nother segment on that. So, uh, and, and if someone is thinking, okay, I think I wanted to do this then, um, if they are targeting the right problems, mm -hmm. they can potentially change their credit score fairly quickly sometimes? Yes, fairly quickly, and it could be the, the rules with the medical collections now. They, if they're paid off, they no longer report to your credit. Um, if it's over a certain amount, they don't, or under a certain amount, they don't report at all. It could be the number of inquiries. Maybe somebody was going to purchase an automobile, or they were already shopping for a home and didn't really know what their credit scores were. Um, it, it could be a multitude of factors, and we can help pinpoint that and say, okay, if we do this over the next six to nine months, you'll be in a much better position 
to buy a home at that 12 month mark and maybe we can shorten that out a little bit if somebody's really diligent on getting that taken care of. One of the things that we've discussed uh, this week is the importance of having a spending plan, not mm -hmm. a budget. Spending plan is positive, budget <laughs> is restrictive. I like the fact that you kept that positivity going yes. by saying that it's a case by case basis, never say never. Right. Great to see you both. Thank you so Thank much. You. You. you can learn more at tbfcu.com. Their phone number is 634-3600. And you can do a lot of loan applications on their website. Correct. So any time of day that works for you will end up working for them. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Thank you.